In this video, I'm going to unbox the Philips 902 OLED television and explore the picture settings in the user menu. So here's the Philips 902 OLED all unboxed and set up and I've connected this television to the SkyQ UHD box and I'm going to go through the picture settings in the user menu and see what's actually available. If I press the settings button and we go to all settings, I'll go through them and explain them. 
if we go into picture, picture style is basically the different picture presets on this television. And I believe that the default one is actually standard, but I'm using ISF day now because I'm filming during daytime for a brighter environment. And if we go back, color is basically a global color control that boosts the saturation and luminance or reduces it. Contrast, this is actually what Philips call their backlight or the equivalent of OLED light on their television. So if you actually increase the contrast, it will increase the light output. If you decrease this contrast, it will reduce the light output. Sharpness is basically edge enhancement. Brightness affects the video black level. And if we go into advance, computer is basically PC mode. If you actually switch it on, what it will do is to enable 404 chroma so that text from computers or PCs or laptops can look clearer. But technically, you shouldn't be using an OLED TV as a monitor anyway because OLED televisions are prone to image retention and screen burns if you display a static image for too long, such as the taskbar, the Windows taskbar, and things like that. Going to color, color enhancement is actually grayed out in the ISF modes, but what it is is to just boost the color saturation and luminance even more. Color temperature allows us to calibrate the grayscale if we actually go into the custom submenu. And you can see that the default is actually fairly blue. It allows you to adjust the red, green, and blue white points, so this affects the brighter portion of the image. Or the red, green, and blue black level, which affects the darker portion of the image. So if we go back here, and let's switch it back to warm. Color control is the two-axis color management system available on Philips television. It allows us to adjust the hue or saturation of the three primary colors of red, green, and blue, and the three secondary colors of yellow, cyan, and magenta. Again, I have no idea why Philips has arranged this as such, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, magenta whereas most other manufacturers will arrange it in the order of RGB CMY. RGB only mode allows you to check the color decoding of your television, of your Philips television, if you are using a more traditional method like a color filter from a digital video essential disc. But these days, especially if you hire a competent calibrator, then what we tend to do is to just use our meter to measure it rather than depend on an old and really quite ineffective method like a color filter. Contrast. Right, so contrast mode, again, I have to do more testing about this, but anything that is optimized is usually not desirable to calibrators and video enthusiasts who desire an accurate image. HDR upscaling is basically Philips SDR to HDR conversion. As you can see that it only applies to standard dynamic range sources or SDR sources. HDR perfect is grayed out now because I'm actually feeding an SDR signal to the Philips 902, but if you feed an HDR signal, then you can ask the TV to do further optimization. Perfect contrast, this is generally just dynamic contrast stretching. Video contrast, now this is the, on other TVs, this is usually known as contrast per se, but Philips is labeling it as video contrast, and what this does is to affect the digital white level, whether you can actually see whiter than white signals or just below white signals. Light sensor, we usually tend to turn it off because if you switch it on, the TV will be doing its own adjustment based on an ambient light detection sensor. Gamma, again, 
Input signal is not directly translated to on-screen luminance. There's usually a logarithmic value that is being applied. So gamma is basically how bright the on-screen luminance is relative to the input signal. Sharpness, right? This is more edge enhancement. Picture clean noise reduction and impact artifact reduction for less than pristine sources. Motion. I've always liked the motion handling on Philips televisions and this year what they are actually doing is that they are growing out the perfect natural motion and the perfect clear motion sub-controls if you choose the movie or sports or standard or smooth preset if you select personal to customize it, then it allows you to individually tailor perfect natural motion, which is motion compensated frame interpolation, or perfect clear motion, which is also motion compensated frame interpolation, but it only applies to high frame rate content. So it won't introduce Opera effect or SOE to 24 frames per second movies. All right, let's... Uh Go back to movie and then clear the residual image. Now this is something that is new. I don't actually recall seeing this option on the Philips 901F that I reviewed more than a few months ago. So what this does is to actually manually trigger an OLED composition cycle to clear up any image retention and to improve the uniformity of your OLED panel. And by providing this option, this brings Philips or TP Vision, who is the parent company behind Philips branded televisions in the UK and European countries, it brings Philips in line with other OLED manufacturers such as LG, Sony and Panasonic that provides this sort of manual composition cycle activation. So the equivalent control on the LG OLED is clear panel noise and it's good to see that Philips have started offering this in their user menu. Picture format just allows you to adjust the aspect ratio. And then let's see what other things are available. All right, Ambilight. So being a Philips television, they have an integrated bias lighting system, which the company brands as Ambilight and is usually fairly effective. And you can just choose to tailor it to the image or use a static setting. So this bias lighting system, what it does is to provide a baseline illumination so that your pupils are not overworked when the image switches from dark to bright images or vice versa on screen. And it increases the perceived black level and reduces eye fatigue. And I'm a big fan of Ambilight technology. And what other things? All right, general settings. I think there's something quite important in general settings and it is this HDMI Ultra HD control. So even though this TV, I haven't even actually checked how many HDMI ports this TV has, but only HDMI 1 and 2 is fully compatible with HDMI 2.0B format, which is the standard that supports HDR10 and HLG. So if you want to allow your Ultra HD Blu-ray player to recognize this Philips 902 as an HDR capable display, then I believe you need to switch on HDMI Ultra HD to UHD 444 or UHD 422 for the higher bit depth and the higher chroma. Now the equivalent settings on other brands are, I think on Sony is called Enhanced Signal on Samsung, so they are called HDMI UHD Color. On LG televisions, it's called Ultra HD Deep Color. Um, Ultra Deep, that's what she said. And I believe that is all for now. 
So I'm going to spend the best part of the next couple of weeks testing and reviewing this television. If you have any questions about this TV, feel free to leave some in the YouTube comment section below. Now, I know I've not been very proactive in answering these questions directly in the comment section, but the reason why I'm asking you to submit these questions is so that I can actually take these into account when I'm actually testing and reviewing these televisions. I'm extremely busy and next week I'm actually flying to Munich to give a speech on picture quality and I have tons of calibration requests that I haven't actually replied yet. So if you have actually submitted a request to ask me to calibrate your display, please bear with me for a while. I know I'm not the most prompt replier, but that's because I have a million things going on at one time. So please be patient with me. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HDTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you the next time.